It's a beautifully bright spring day here in London, central London, right near the palace. And whilst I've only ridden the bike through London once earlier last year, time to do it again. But this time, not to go anywhere or to do anything, but to go collect a bike for someone. Don't worry about the details, but more importantly, it's a bit of a quirky one. The Aprilia Manor 850 GT. Surprisingly, it seems a very tiny amount of people have actually heard of this bike, partially where it was a generic commuter and non-flagship bike for a relatively low-key brand, but also because it's an automatic. Housing an 850cc V-twin, same as in their SVX scooter, I think it was. They're running a scooter-type CVT continuously variable transmission system with seven speeds. So, much like the NC750 DCT, this falls into a very small category of maybe two or three vehicles. That are auto, with low clutches, and gearboxes. As you can probably see, this big lump on the side does a lot to do with that. But, no clutch lever, but there's still a gear pedal. And, a flappy paddle sort of system. Before I got to the shop and collected this bike, I purposely did zero research about how to use it properly. The rest of what I know is what the shop told me before I rode it, and what I'm going to figure out as we go along. Speaking of which, let's get cracking. With the parking brake disengaged, on we go. There's no clutch he was putting to start, but it won't start. Brake, start. And it's in gear. There is no neutral. Right, one London to explore. Let's go. Before I go too far into this video, I will say that much like any time I ride other bikes and make videos on them, they're not reviews, they're just me going, ooh, ha. Ah. Look at this! And this one I intend to be no different. Well, I'm going to Trafalgar Square with very little people in it. And that's where it just was. Ah. I'm only going to say this once, because everyone's bored of it by now in the here and presence. But it is so empty. We are in the midst of the COVID-19 situation. Well, I say the midst. Who knows how long it can go for at this point as I speak. This is one of them events where I do not know a time in the future when a city like this will be this quiet. Now that's the house you want to be quarantined in. Yes! <laughs> anyway, plan of action for today, after I dicked about around the palace, is go towards the city a bit more towards the waterfront and then head back towards Leicester via the non-motorway way. I don't know what that is yet, but I'll soon find that out. So it'll be a nice little run on this unusual technology. Safe to say it's so unusual that it never really took off beyond this. I probably never made a bike to come after it really, as far as I'm aware anyway. Even though Britain is a representative of mainland Europe, Brexit joke, because we buy nowhere near as many super scooters or fully auto bikes as they do. It's still interesting to see how many of these are on the road in this country. And as of this morning, in total, for the Aprilia Manor 850 GT, so the GT being the version with this fairing arrangement, there are 55 in the UK. Sawned and taxed, all of them. And even if you include the naked version which was more popular in total including the naked and the gt all variants you're looking at that's that's throughout the whole run of this bike they sold about the same amount of a pretty tuono thousands they sent a year that's their premium flagship really expensive bike and they sold more of them per year i am a massive advocate of manufacturers trying new things and pushing new technologies out there which is generally not the way that britain thinks hello again your majesty i will be going soon don't worry anytime a bike that is anyway unusual, such as the Nike and such as these sort of things. As soon as they come along, Britain scoffs and says something along the lines of that's not a real motorbike and they die away. Shame, because unlike the car world where you have measurably better ways of making a car better, for example, it is stiffer, it is faster to XP, so on and so forth. For motorbikes, there is no one way to do something better. If it's being ridden and the rider doesn't have the same feel or the same confidence in the system, that's it, it's done for. Love jibber jabber about that sort of thing. Time to enjoy the ride. And if you notice there when I was pulling away from those lights, it is easy. <laughs> so far though, with a city bike, this is brilliant. As long as you know how to use your rear brake to control speed at walking pace rather than the clutch, then this is grand. I've yet to see the HP in the scaffolding. It looks like it's in scaffolding. Look at all this, London is awesome. Really is. Once I get out of the city, I will start thinking about with all the modes and that sort of thing. But at the moment, I've just got it in middle of the road touring mode. Because unlike standard manual motorcycles with their modes that just change a bit of power and traction and all that sort of thing. This, the modes, only do that, they affect the gearbox. Oh, what a view though. Yes. Noisy bike going into the tunnel. Let's be quiet for a moment. Nothing disappointing. Uh, right, there's the tower. 
let's try and go back towards where we actually need to go now. <laughs> There's the bike shed. So, time to head north. Out of here. I reckon the route we're going to take, this is the 810, so this goes all the way to, oh, Hartford, that's the one. And then from there to Stevenage and beyond. And then when time becomes an issue, I'll jump on the 81. Easy. That's quite impressive. Ta-da! Hartford! NSX! Yes! What a car! Escapade from London with success, and now it's time to finally get on some more country, well, I say more country lanes, I haven't got on any country lanes yet. Time to get on some country lanes and not do any dual carriageway city riding for a moment. More ride this vehicle, hey, around town. The more you do notice the uh, vibrations when you do initially set off. In between about zero and 10 miles an hour, the whole sort of front end shakes and the mirrors do a bit of like a vibration as you get going. A bit like if you release the clutch too quickly on a manual bike, everything starts to go really low revs and jittery. It's like a bit like that, but it's not a bad thing. It's just, you notice it, but it's all right. And once we get onto the country lane, we'll try dicking about with the gears. What I have noticed is that in touring and rain mode, you can only go down by choice. You can go up back to where it thinks it should be. But as you're choosing along in the gear that it thinks is correct, you can't go up any further. Once we're out of town, we'll wang in sport mode to see if that makes it a bit more manual. Though, something I did find out when I was trying to push the upshift button, which is just down here next to the horn, is that it is actually quite close to the horn. It's quite easy to hit the horn. And a good way to find that out is when you're in Rubber Hive Tunnel, and when you also find out that there is a Denali Sound Bomb horn fit to this bike. It's quite loud. <laughs> Right, we're going to be into the national soon, so let's push the gear mode button over here. And if we were stopped and I was pushing this round, you would actually hear it going bzz, bzz, into the different modes. But, well, hey, right, sport mode it is very high revving now. That is, <laughs> it has dropped it down a gear, and I still can't go up by choice. I'm sure I'll be able to go down by choice, but I think I'm already in first. But, as it's now amplified due to the fact we're buzzing along probably in first gear, <laughs> engine braking is uh, very much existent on this bike. Dr. 40. That ain't limp, that ain't limp. It's an 850V twin, it's putting out much, this much power, say an axle core, remember? And it feels about the same as a 650 liquid cooled twin, like an SV or an ER6 or a, maybe even an MT07. But that ain't slow. It's just deceptively fast, so there is no jerking action at all from anything. Everything is so smooth, you don't realize how quickly you're accelerating. And brakes. Oh yeah, they work. <laughs> Let's get some overtake go. That is good. There is that subtle fluffiness you get, like when you drive an automatic car. Well, you know, there's not quite that mechanical connection between the crankshaft and the rear wheel. It's different, but does not say it's any worse. Ah, uh, Stevenage. Though tourist attractions, no, Stevenage cannot have any tourist attractions. <laughs> Anywho, didn't quite get clear on those little country roads, so let's jump on the A1 for a bit and go back to the more close to home that I know of. Oh dear, just pulled over just off the A14, just so I've put a fresh camera battery in for the last little leg. And whilst going through roundabouts, work sort of thing along the journey, along the main roads, I couldn't get it to go up a gear when I wanted to. I could go down a gear if I wanted to, but I couldn't get it to go up. So for the first time, I've had a quick look online to see how it works. And apparently, I haven't tried it yet, if I hold the gear button for two seconds, it will go to full sport and manual mode. Right, touring mode, that's what I had it on all the time. Hold. Sport gear, here we go. Oh, it feels like a sequential. <laughs> And it's got shift lights. Here we go, now we're talking. And all of a sudden, it makes so much more sense now. Now there's a full manual mode. I wasn't trying to find it because I wanted it to be like a normal bike. It's not a normal bike unless it's got gears. No, not at all. But a bike with flappy paddles, essentially. Yes, go on to try that. All right, here we come out of town, so it's good. Let's drop it down a second. First, and go. <laughs> oh, that's great! When you're giving it a hand for the throttle and then you whack the button without doing anything to the throttle, you can feel it almost like a proper sequential box in a car. It's not like a quick shift where it goes bang bang. It's like, it's like punching a pillow. That f f f Once you get used to it, the different feel of it, you better ride this pretty briskly, that's for sure. Oh dear. I better start heading back to mine before it gets too late. But I'm going to try one more thing now. I've got it in full auto. How well does it do a launch? Hee <laughs> hee! <laughs> 
That'll do me for today. Thanks very much for sharing this automatic experience. The weird and wonderful world of motorbikes. There are some strange ones out there, you just gotta go find them. Yes! Lovely. Right, that's all. Till next time, adios.